Hello and welcome back to Watching Brief. Or rather, I suppose, hello, I'm back on Watching Brief. Uh, it has been a few episodes, a couple of months since I was able to comfortably record these uh uh, these pertinent news conversations with my wonderful co-host Andy Brockman and indeed he has been the the primary host of Watching Brief for the past few episodes uh thank you for for carrying that that heavy burden Andy that's okay I'm, I'm feeling a lot less lonely today I have to say good good no it's good to be back but also obviously I've been there in spirit editing all the way through and I think we have discovered a new format that is to say for discrete news updates uh, essentially a format that that does essentially clip off at around about 10 minutes for uh, for shorter form viewing uh, and so with that in mind this week's episode is going to have that uh, shape and form on for example tiktok but uh on youtube we'll be hanging around to 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 discuss and chew some of the fat after uh, after andy has presented the uh, uh the the well, yeah, the facts, as it were, the facts, my lord, around this particular uh, episode to do with Gunung Padang and Graham Hancock's assertions around that pyramidal shaped structure. So uh, let's hear what Andy has to say. Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of Watching Brief Special News Reports. This week it's really the only archaeological news in town, which is the retraction by academic publisher Wiley Online of the controversial article about the Gunung Padang hill volca extinct volcano pyramid in, uh, in in Java, Indonesia. Uh, the original article was published in October 2023 in the Wiley Journal uh, Archaeological Prospection, which deals with essentially archaeological geophysics and other remote sensing methods. And it controversially argued that the Gunung Padang Hill, which is a well-known site in Indonesia, it's been uh, investigated by archaeologists previously, um, showed evidence of human occupation and the first phase of construction at least 20,000 years ago, which isn't supposed to have happened. Um, the conventional archaeology uh, done by Indonesian archaeologists places the main construction at the site at around 2,200 years ago. Uh, now, it just so happened that, that that particular dating tied in with the views of the British journalist and writer Graham Hancock, who has controversially uh, suggested that there was a global civilization um, that built major constructions like uh, the uh, like pyramids at various points in the world during this period, and its influence can still be seen today. But that conventional archaeology denies its existence. Now, when the paper was published, many archaeologists read it and immediately took issue with the conclusions because, essentially it was argued, the authors of the paper, um, led by a, an Indonesian uh, geologist, Danny Hillman, um, basically took, a, took dirt from a geological core, dated it, and then said, uh, when it came back with a carbon date of around 22,000 BC, that it was, down to hum uh, it, it was down to human activity. Now, you can see the immediate problem there is that there was no proven correlation between the dating, the material that was being dated, and human artifacts. And it's essentially, um, they were dating dirt, they were dating geology, they weren't dating archaeology. Uh, as a result of the complaint, Wiley's investigated the article, which had passed peer review, um, Archaeological Prospection is a peer review journal. And this week, on the 18th of March, they published this retraction. Uh, it quotes the article's um, name and URL and so on, and then says, the above article published online on the 20th of October 2023 in Wise Online Library has been retracted by agreement between the journal editors-in-chief and John Wiley and Sons Limited. Uh, and then it goes on to say, following the publication of this article, concerns were raised by third parties with expertise in geophysics, archaeology and radiocarbon dating about the conclusions drawn by the authors based on the evidence reported. The publisher and the co-editors-in-chief have investigated these concerns and have concluded the article contains a major error. This error, which was not identified during peer review, is that the radiocarbon dating was applied to soil samples that were not associated with any artefacts or features that could be reliably interpreted as anthropogenic. 
that is man-made. Therefore, the interpretation that the site is an ancient pyramid built 9,000 or more years ago is incorrect, and the article must be retracted. Danny Hillman responded on behalf of the authors, all of whom disagree with the retraction. And in fact, um, in the last 24 hours, uh, Graham Hancock himself has published uh, correspondence uh, relating to that investigation with Danny Hillman and the other authors uh, and um, questioning uh, wh where they question the, uh, the criticisms that were made of the article. Um, uh, the issue really has now descended into one of my experts disagree with your experts and the uh the supporters of um uh, supporters of graham hancock are arguing that this is yet another case of uh, censorship and suppression by big archaeology uh proponents and supporters of, of, of the position taken by wiley uh, on the other hand say that uh, this is a normal process of academic to and fro the article was found to be based on a fundamental error any archaeologist publishing an article based on a fundamental error would expect to see that article retracted. Uh, of course, what the investigation and certainly what the press release to do with the investigation doesn't explain is why the article got through a process of peer review in the first place, because uh, it's fair to say uh, many archaeologists, including I think this one speaking to you now, read the paper and immediately picked up the issue that the that the, the authors hadn't proven any correlation between the dates they were coming back with and human activity. Um, it's, an, it's a story that's going to run and run, and um, I suspect we're going to be talking about this before not very long, once again. Well, that was the Watching Brief news. Welcome to the Watching Brief discussion with me, Andy Brockman, and Mark Bartman Astles of Archeosu Productions. All of this is made possible by our wonderful supporters on Patreon and our wonderful supporters who buy the pipeline of Kofi or a beer, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, we couldn't do the work that we do without your support. Please carry on supporting us and please get your friends and colleagues to uh, bang us a few quid from time to time as well, please. <laughs> yeah. We would really appreciate it. Yep. So, uh, it's really hard isn't it in all honesty as human beings you've done a very good job there in summing up that news story but as human beings and archaeologists it's hard not to have a little bit of joy at at this occurring in the way that it that it did now the re in so the word you're looking for is schadenfreude isn't it? <laughs> well no except i know i was being very specific i nearly said schadenfreude because mm. the crucial thing here is that uh, Hancock for my lifetime essentially has been seeking uh, recognition and acceptance by so-called mainstream archaeologists of yeah. his theories and ideas and here we have uh, a crucial test case of uh, of a piece of evidence going up into publication uh, somehow getting through peer review uh, mm -hmm. going in front of in that sense so-called mainstream archaeology and archaeologists and geologists of course crucially and immediately having a problem because of the methodology and so uh, the reason why i say joyful is that it's a joy to see hancock get his day in uh, in that sort of you know hall of peers and get that recognition but also crucially have to play by the same rules that we play by uh, have to actually uh, have evidence which is as you uh, pointed out as was pointed out in the quotes that you uh, highlighted evidence that is actually uh, b b rooted in human activity and human behavior as opposed to any number of geological processes that can send dirt down a crack into the heart of a great big porous mound mm. um, uh, crucially no one's denying the human activity later on on top of that mound and that the 2200 years ago i think you were saying uh it, it, but that's because there's evidence for that so the joy here is the joy of the scientific method and the need for methodology that that, that makes sense that's repeatable and that crucially is proving what you say it proves i.e is connected to human activity i mean what what do you make of it because you know undeniably we have seen some some slightly uh what's the word uh, slightly more 
uh, people are speaking with more brevity, shall we say, <laughs> on social media about this. P -p -p people talking on X Twitter. Mm. Um, look, I I I'm I'm reminded. I mean, in terms of uh, vindication, vindication is a word that's been used a lot in this. When um, mm. when when the article was published, Han Graham Hancock used the word vindication in his tweet, welcoming it effusively. Mm. Um, and I think that it, it, what, what we've got here is something that reminds me of possibly my favourite episode of Time Team, where... Is that the one they, on Shooter's Hill, where some weird local archaeologist no, shows people it's, around? It's, no, okay. okay. Not, no, that, no. That, that, was, that was really dodgy, and the conclusions were absolute rubbish, <laughs> uh, apart, from, apart from the Bronze Age bit, which actually turned out to be early Iron Age. Okay. But... Um, Thanks to dating, in fact. Thanks yeah, to scientific indeed. dating. What, so what ev evidence? And people had to change their mind? Ev is that evidence? <laughs> That's so, right. So go no, the, yeah, your favourite your favorite episode, yeah. go on. No, the, and I think many people, I think, I think, I come a bit, it might even, uh, I think it might have been Phil Harding's or, or even McCaster. And one of the Time Team compilations, it, 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 one, of the, one of the Time Team members cited it as their favourite episode, right. which is a Welsh site where all sorts of remarkable things were being reported and the Time Team descended on it and managed to prove that, in fact, the whole thing was a setup. Um, for right. example, you had a, 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 an Iron Age uh, sword, I think it was, uh, with a piece of 20th century barbed wire overlaying it. Ah. Um, so you can see there's an immediate problem with dating. Dating matters a lot in these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically, it was 50 minutes of the time team using scientific method to prove oh. somebody almost certainly deliberately they didn't name anybody but they, you no. know, obviously you watch the program you had suspicions who was doing it yeah um but the 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 the, the site was be, had been deliberately salted um mm. with an idea for attracting a 15 minutes of fame on the telly or tourists or what who knows yeah uh, but they, they, yeah there were fake standing stones and all sorts of other things going on as well um now in this case um no one's accusing uh, Danny Hillman and the authors of the paper, or Graham Hancock, of deliberately faking evidence. Mm -hmm. No, but what they have been shown to have done by a process of perhaps far too late investigation and effective peer review, very public peer review, actually, by the reactions to the paper, mm. is that what was presented in a journal of record just didn't cut it. Mm. The claims that were being made, the evidence wasn't there to support them. Mm. And um, far from vindication of Graham Hancock's views, what was actually happening was a critique of Graham Hancock's views mm -hmm. and essentially an argument that Mr. Hancock and his supporters were seeing what they wanted to see and interpreting it in the way that they wanted to interpret it, which isn't necessarily the one that's borne out by the evidence that everybody else would use. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and 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 that's 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 the heart of it. That was. I mean, I recall when when you and I um, had a conversation with Bill Farley on this. Uh, we 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 three. Um, when shall we three meet again? At some point, we'll be meeting. Well, please again. don't mention the Scottish play. It's really <laughs> like me with a, don't be my dodgy theatrical background. I care about things like that. <laughs> When when we do three meet again, it'll be interesting to follow up on this. But I remember at the time, uh, we three all su suggested and agreed that if the evidence was associated with human activity um, mm. uh, and it wasn't a plant, then we would have to change our minds. That's the yes. way the game works. And, Absolutely. And I think if if nothing, if if anyone's watching this and is eager to. To, to to as we've seen elsewhere already, you know, to eager to sort of type out a sort of a, a, a you know, you guys just weren't ready for the evidence. It's been suppressed, as Hancock himself has, has suggested. Help! Help! But being suppressed, I've yeah. seen violence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, if anyone is, then then uh, the 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 simple the simple threshold for for um for for demonstrating that that's not correct. Is to talk about the quality of the evidence, and in, that, in this instance, yeah. the quality of the, of the evidence just simply wasn't there. Um, I, in some ways, you know, I remain um, eager to be shown proof of complex 
uh, previously unfathomed unfath ancient civilizations and visitations from other planets even, depending on which pseudo-archaeologist you're listening to on these things. Mm. Uh, but so far, there has been no actual evidence of that. Um, where, where do you think I, this? Where, so, where do you think this leads? Uh, leaves rather, sorry, um, academic publishing, and and perhaps more broadly, its relationship to, I guess, an accessible discourse. Because, because uh, I think I was saying to you before we started recording this, in this instance, what we've had here, um, in a way which is actually quite, uh, quite interesting, we've actually had Hancock's assertions coming into as it were, our playing field. We've been able to actually mm. meet him with 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 rules that 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 we all understand in place. Uh but but how did it get onto that playing field in the first place? Uh and is that a good or bad thing? Because the second part of my question is uh, uh, that, that I was suggesting is really to do with accessibility. Arguably, in this instance, possibly Hancock has drawn a lot of eyes to an academic article, which uh, you know, which which has to be applauded. If people are looking to publish and have that their their, their assertions tested, that's good, isn't it? Surely. I think there are a number of things that um, can be uh, 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 coming out of this that mm. are really good lessons to learn, both for obviously Mr. Hancock and his supporters, but also for archaeologists who engage with the media and engage with this kind of subject mm. um, and, and the, the wider public and, and also for people in the media who write and report about this kind of subject and oh. I'll, I'll, I'll take them really sort of in order what one is that um, first of all you need to really see these things in the round and I, I'll, I'll direct people to a twitter thread by um, archaeologist Flynn Dibble who's another one of the um, people who've been uh, front and centre in critiquing Grant Hancock. Mm. Um, one of the things that uh, Flint make, states very strongly in a, a, in a thread about this is that when the paper was first published, he, f he reached out to uh, Indonesian archaeologists, including uh, two who appeared on a video on YouTube, which Flint produced. Um, one is a PhD candidate called Harry Sofian, and another is Dr. Lutfi Yondri. Dr. Dr. Yondri has actually excavated at Gunung Padang and published a book about it in Indonesian, hmm. but is available as a, um, a, a, an open access download. Hmm. Um, now, for some strange reason, and this, this discussion is had in the video, uh, Dr. Lutfi uh, Yondri was not cited in that paper. Hmm. Now, it's Dr. Yondri who has come up with the dating, the more conventional dating of around about 2,000 years ago mm. for mm. human activity at Gunung Padang. Mm. So there's, not, there's, there's no, nobody's denying that there's archaeology there. You know, le legitimate, you know, reputable archaeologists have mm. worked there and come up with evidence. Mm. Uh, what they haven't come up with is the kind of evidence that is being quoted in the paper that was published by Wiley in Archaeological Perspection. So... You know, you have to ask when you read something, particularly when it's something remarkable, how, you know, what are the sources? How wide is the trawl of the sources? Are they quoting, you know, all the sources they might? You know, th this this wasn't obscure work that took place decades ago. It's mm. it's it's almost contemporary. Although although what you're what you're just talking about there is is being a reader. That's that's mm. that's once it's been published. Presumably, mm. though, there's a there's a question here about the uh, uh, the peer review process that no one said. Hang on, why haven't you cited this? Why haven't you looked at that? You know, there yeah. are alternative ideas here. How are you weighing yeah. these against those? This kind of thing. And, and in fact, over on Blue Sky, I was having this discussion with a uh, with a colleague that, who, who was saying that actually uh, peer review is reckoned to be known to be fallible, mm. Mm. Uh, and perhaps more fallible than people would like to admit. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, it was it's, it's retraction watch isn't it the uh, that brilliant website that yep. um mm -hmm. that, look, that looks at articles that have been retracted from academic journals yeah which actually i think this pops up this is one of their latest uh, one of their latest stories yeah yeah um i'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan yep yeah exactly um and you have to ask why that is you know mm. uh, 
again, you hear reports, for example, that editors of journals uh, have difficulty in getting people with appropriate experience to peer review, mm. uh, either because you know they're too busy, because they're not paid, yeah, yeah, um, and 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 so on, or or, or you know the the expertise, uh, the, sorry, the area is sometimes maybe so niche that there are so few people that would be capable of peer reviewing it. Mm. Um, they're probably involved in writing the article in the first place. Hmm. You know, but, so well, there's, well, lo there's lots of ways this could go wrong. Well, and attached, and attached to that, sorry, there's also the issue of the editing team, the editorial team, editing team, knowing that what they're looking at requires additional, hmm. uh, a, a few extra eyes on it with particular expertise. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it, it can it can be fraught. Yeah, yeah. On, on the other hand, you, you can say on this one, it was such a latent error you know it, it was an error written in neon lights if somebody like me who's not a specialist geophysicist okay i'm trained as an archaeologist as a field archaeologist i know what dating is for i know roughly what methods you can use and so mm -hmm. on and also and, how, how broadly speaking how stratigraphy and geo geological processes ab work ab yeah. ab absolutely and if i'm on a site taking sampling for uh for, for, for dating purposes how closely you have to record it you have to record it in three dimensions where it's actually coming from and so on and so on, what it's associated with and so on, so on, so on. yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so 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 okay uh, someone with a just some background mm. if i'd been given that paper i would have put a blooming great red flag on that piece of evidence mm. so and, right. and, 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 and other people far more qualified on than 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 you know, me picked picked it up straight away and complained to Wiley that mm. something odd was going on here. Yeah. And to their credit, Wiley did actually did actually investigate it. As I say, um, what what, and I suspect we won't find out is how it came to be published in the first place. No. What what the what the peer review process? Yeah, you know, peer review of necessity is anonymized. Mm. Um, and given that there may there could even be legal issues around this, I don't we, we're un, unless some whistleblower um, makes public the process by which this article came to be published. Mm. I doubt we'll, we'll know the full mechanisms. And again, I, in saying that, I'm not suggesting anyone did anything illegal, unethical, or whatever. No, no. But it, you know, it, it an article that should never have got past the first review by an editor got through peer review and ended up being published yeah. and is now pretty it's pretty humiliating for the journal well it's, but it's but, 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 but it's also immediately going to enter into the annals of this was suppressed evidence this kind of and thing. yeah right and, and and again i've got no evidence for saying this is what happened hmm. but given that mr hancock was so closely aligned with this paper both through the Ancient Apocalypse TV series, mm -hmm. where Gunung Padang was one of the major sites featured on location, lots of lovely drone shots. It's very photogenic. Um, but Mr. Hancock has been writing about his association with the work at Gunung Padang since 2014. If you go to his website, you'll see an article he wrote in 2014 mm -hmm. talking about the work of Danny Hillman and his co uh, and his colleagues there and and the, and the evidence they were come up coming up with. Mm -hmm. So the two sets of people inputting to that article um are associated um graham hancock his support is acknowledged in the in the paper mm -hmm. and put it no more strongly than this if graham hancock was looking looking to uh to, fi to find a case study in how big archaeology reacted to his work mm. uh, and to set up a, a them and us situation this is this has delivered it absolutely perfectly well and this this leads into i suppose something which i know i know does concern you and that is the extent to which uh the, the extent to which the response goes so for example it probably is enough to to have it as a as a response of process and asking questions about the peer review process and keep it's talking about publishing i suppose is what i'm saying mm -hmm. but uh, we are at risk of a lot a bit of schadenfreude and yeah. possibly some personalities coming into it yes. uh, and personality clashes coming into it 
that only plays into Personalities that. and egos evolved in archaeological argument, Mike. No, surely, on. surely not. Surely not. <laughs> <clears throat> See my mini series, Archaeological Fallacies, for more. Um, no, no, <laughs> no, no, but, but it, 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 in that sense, and that, that, that plays into the hand mm. of someone who wants to continue the story of Ganang Padang as being um, a, a mystery and a, and a great big question mark, as opposed to something which has not yet had adequate evidence uh, re um, recovered. Uh, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Uh, because because and let, let me just lay out something as a as a thought of myself. So maybe it's food for thought for you as well. Um, like it or not, these conversations are going to happen. People are going to say, "Was it suppressed?" Do archaeologists have a secret society or cabal that stops true evidence getting out there? And that stuff's going to make it its way onto popular, uh, well, onto forums of various sorts, but in particular onto places like, for example, Joe Rogan's podcast. You know, uh, yeah. I, I would be amazed if they hadn't already booked him, booked Graham Hancock, that is, again, to to, to reappear to yeah. talk about this this uh, this incident. Yeah. Um, yeah. Surely there needs to be a voice present there. Or a voice that's willing to be present there, uh, in order to have the converse, have these conversations in a way which is understandable and accessible to those audiences. Uh, or, or, or do you not think? I mean, what, what? Yeah, what do you think? I used to think that uh, you have to just go out debate, you know, debate these issues, debate these questions, and if you have the if you have the stronger argument, you'll win. Mm. Now, I no longer believe that. No. Um, I no longer believe that because of the rise of populism, because of things like the Brexit vote, because of things like the, um, the, the, the election of Donald Trump and the continued success of Donald Trump as a public figure masquerading as a politician, mm. um, which uh, a, a, and through COVID, COVID denialism, climate change, climate change denialism and so on. Um, and very personally on the working on the buried spitfires of burma mm. uh, project mm. um it is now clear to me and it is I'm, I'm i'm here i'm quoting modern psychological research that there is a sizable portion of the population that is unpersuadable in these matters mm. they are susceptible to conspiracy theories of all kinds um and if you try and persuade them otherwise they see that as a confirmation of their original view because you're but if you try to persuade them the conspiracy yeah. doesn't exist you're part of the conspiracy absolutely yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's sort of 16 to 20 percent isn't it of the population around that's that yeah. that's the rough estimate yeah and, and, and again yeah, yeah and, and some will be extremely susceptible some will be marginally less susceptible mm. but but I, I i i either way they're more inclined to to believe the conspiracy than to believe the rational Mm. explanation mm. and if that's the case um again I, I was reading a piece um talking about um le uh, the law um this morning uh, you know uh, and, and i think there's a lot you know when you're talking about the law and legal representation the work that solicitors and barristers do you're trying to persuade you're building a case and trying to persuade people mm -hmm. and the point this article was making it uh, is that barristers when they're in training um, they're taught to identify whether somebody is persuadable. And if somebody's persuadable, then they try and persuade them. If they're identifying uh, and identified as not being persuadable, then they don't bother. You just present the case anyway, put the case out there, and what they think matters neither here nor there. Mm. And um, so that and and I suppose that's extremely pertinent in a legal situation because let's say Mike definitely killed Bob. Mike's wife might never believe that. And yeah. you, you can't argue her into a position of, <laughs> of believing that because she's exactly. loyal, because she's invested, because so on and so yeah. forth. There are reasons why yeah. people don't want to believe Precisely. things that are laid out in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I think, you know, Graham, Graham Hancock supporters will believe because they want to believe. Mm. Graham Hancock may believe what he writes or he may believe what he writes uh, will make him more money than actually entering that mainstream archaeology. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm not inside his head. No. Uh, I don't know his motivation, and I'm not going to speculate on it. No. But, you know, the point is, whatever Flynn or any of the other 
you know, Bill, us, any of the archaeologists that critique Graham Hancock's work say, it's not going to change his mind. He's not going to stop publishing his books. No. So all we can do is put the counter evidence out there. Um, yeah, you know, this, this, as you say, he, in a sense, he made the mistake of coming to play on, on the away pitch. And well, he, it, it, yeah. I, I mean, you say it's a mistake, but I think. He his, wins either way. He well, wins he, either well, way. I mean, he does win either way, but also, but I think to his credit, uh, the attempt, if we take it at face value and in good faith, I don't necessarily believe it was in good faith, but in good faith, um, he was trying to deliver something that archaeologists have been asking him for for a long time, mm. arguably. It's just unfortunate that, that that someone didn't understand or or something else got in the way and actually he didn't he didn't deliver the goods. Mm. Um so I mean that that's I think that's being me being quite charitable <laughs> there, but but in that mm. sense, I again I, I I we all have to remain open to being having our minds changed with evidence. That's 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 the crucial aspect here. Yeah. Um, so I, I I'm yeah I'm not uh, as I was saying I'm not I'm not I'm not closed to it. I just want want there to be good evidence. And and as you say, we can't speculate on on. Uh, someone else's mind and motivations yeah. although we can make a note of the fact that that he's now a good you know few decades into this and it has made him quite a lot of money so there know. is a, 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 I, I won't quote it because i've not verified it personally but there is a um a, a tweet doing the rounds at the moment with, um, allegedly from uh, mr hancock's agent uh, agent hmm. offering him as a speaking uh, a, 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 as a guest to speak at an event for a fair amount of money. Okay. So uh five pounds. <laughs> I'd leave home for five pounds right at the moment, know, given yeah. the way the, the, yeah. the, given the finances of UK. Sandwich, a bus ticket, um, I'm there. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. A buffet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cup of tea. Pickled yeah. egg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sausage yeah. roll, pickled egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone brings someone's brought some scones that they've baked. That's all the better, you know. I, w I once went to a, a did a, an evening talk um, where uh, they weren't quite sure what to bring, um, but they decided to bring champagne. Hey, you know why not? <laughs> so we, we just why do I evening. not get why, why do I not get to ask to present at events like that? Oh, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I might suggest it actually next time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, uh, my my retainer is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, give, give, given given my next, he's likely to be at the Young Archaeologist, uh, a branch of the Young Archaeologist Club. I suspect that wouldn't be the case there. But no, anyway. no, no, no. Strong, strong cup of tea. Strong cup of tea. Yes. Um, yeah. Well. Uh, I think that's that really. Again, we don't really want to descend into into actual as Hancock often accuses archaeologists of doing, being actual and ad hominem ad hominem yeah. arguments. Um and uh, this has been, I think, quite a good little episode for me to return on. I've quite enjoyed this this conversation. And uh hopefully you guys at home have enjoyed the the experiment that we're doing. And in this instance, this is I suppose an extension of that experiment where we haven't got an intricate investigated story to tell you or to report on but we do have uh, uh, some facts some journalistically verified facts and then we have opinions this is actually probably actually quite a good way to 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 show that to you and by my calculation less than 40 minutes long i mean goodness me Can life's too short mate life's too short <laughs> um Thank you guys so much for watching at home. Thank you, Andy, for your time this week. Uh, we do have plans. Andy has plans for me. He wants to record something with me in the near future. And uh, we'll be getting back on track with our uh, our plans for 2024 now that my voice is uh, regularly back and fairly um, reliable once more. Um, but yes, if you've enjoyed this, please do consider supporting us on Patreon. Do consider chucking Andy a coffee. Do not throw a coffee in his face, though. He will not thank you for it. Um, or, or, or famously a glass of red wine like um, a famous ITN newsreader did to a famous Conservative politician oh, once at yes. the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Um, I don't know, but again, you know, champagne, you know, it depends on the circumstances. Anyway, yes. do consider that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.